welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, founder of the Tudor Society. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm taking you back to Queen Elizabeth I's reign. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 16th of November 1601, nobleman and rebel Charles Neville, 6th Earl of Westmoreland, died while in exile at Newport in Flanders. With the Percy family, the Nevilles had led the Northern Rebellion, a plot to release Mary, Queen of Scots, from prison and to overthrow Elizabeth I. When the plot failed, Neville fled to Scotland and then on to Flanders. But his plotting didn't stop there. Let me tell you a bit more about Westmoreland. Charles Neville was born in 1542 or 1543 and was the only surviving son of Henry Neville, 5th Earl of Westmoreland, and Anne Manners. He spent his childhood at the family seat of Raby Castle in County Durham, where he was brought up as a Catholic. Charles was styled Baron Neville between 1549 and 1563 and became Earl of Westmoreland on his father's death in 1564. His father was a staunch supporter of the Catholic Queen Mary I, and on the 19th of July 1553, Charles, who was only around 10 years old at the time, signed a letter proclaiming Mary as Queen in place of the Protestant Lady Jane Grey. In around 1563 or 4, Charles married Jane Howard, daughter of the late Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, and sister of Thomas Howard, 4th Duke of Norfolk. Charles and Jane had four daughters and a son who died in infancy. Charles was heavily involved in the November 1569 Northern Rebellion against Elizabeth I, supported by his wife, whose brother, the Duke of Norfolk, was to marry Mary, Queen of Scots, if the rebellion was successful. I'll give you a link to my video on the rebellion, but suffice to say that it failed. Charles was proclaimed a traitor on the 26th of November 1569, but he and his co-rebel Thomas Percy, 7th Earl of Northumberland, had fled to Scotland. In Scotland, Charles was protected by Sir Thomas Kerr, Laird of Fernihurst in Roxburghshire. And in 1570, he was able to flee into exile in the Spanish Netherlands. He would never see his wife or daughters again. The unfortunate Northumberland was handed over to Elizabeth I and executed in 1572. Charles's cousin, spy Sir Robert Constable, who was working for Sir Rafe Sadler, tried to persuade Charles to return to England for a pardon. But Charles wasn't fooled. Attempts to kidnap him in 1575 and 1586 also failed. While he was in exile, he became friends with military leader Don John of Austria and served as a colonel in the Spanish army. In 1571, just a year after he'd fled into exile, Charles became involved in the Ridolfi plot, which again sought to depose Elizabeth I in favour of Mary, Queen of Scots. Charles did his part by trying to get Philip of Spain's support. The plot failed. In 1581, Charles went on a pilgrimage to Rome, and in 1583, he served as a captain under the Duke of Parma. He also served under Parma during the Spanish Armada in 1588. In 1593, his wife Jane died, and there were negotiations for him to marry a daughter of Jean Grousset Richardo, president of the Council of Artois. Charles died before things were arranged. His small pension from Philip of Spain was not enough to support his lifestyle, which has been described as loose living, and he died in debt on this day in 1601. It seems such a sad end. Tomorrow I'll be talking about Queen Elizabeth I's accession and two alternative speeches from the day in 1558. Do make sure you're subscribed and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Also on this day in history, the 16th of November 1612, Elizabethan conspirator William Stafford died. He's an interesting Tudor character because he had Plantagenet blood and also because he was allegedly the chief plotter in the Stafford plot, a plot to assassinate Queen Elizabeth I. But 
he was only imprisoned for a short time and lived the rest of his life quietly in Norfolk, dying a natural death. How and why did William Stafford escape serious punishment for the plot? And what did Sir Francis Walsingham have to do with it all? Hmm. Find out in last year's video. You'll find um, the link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. Do subscribe and do give me a like if you've enjoyed this talk and you can leave a comment too. Take care. Bye-bye.